a warrior, man. He's battling. He's banged up. He's taking shots. They're a physical team. Uh, so, you know, that's, you're going to have to gut it out. Me, uh, you guys can see, he's going to talk amongst the best players in the state. Big stages. He does it every time. It makes incredible catches. Crow plays strips a guy on a kickoff. You know, God does it all. Come on, Hit the East, West, keep the oppas hot on twist you with them choppers. West side, how we rock it, pull up on you, get the poppin'. Hey, them boy don't want no smoke. Them boy don't want no smoke. East, West, keep the oppas hot on twist you with them choppers. West side, how we rock it, pull up on you, get the poppin'. Hey, them boy don't want no smoke. Man, them boy don't want no smoke. Them boy don't want no smoke. It's the longest-running continuous rivalry in West Virginia, and tonight it's at East-West Stadium in Fairmont, where the Fairmont Senior Polar Bears take on the East Fairmont Bees. The Polar Bears come into the game with a record of 6-2. and two. East Fairmont is 8-1, and one, but the Polar Bears have won 15 straight games in this series. The Bees are more hopeful, though, as they come into this game rated number 8 in Class AA. The Polar Bears come in ranked number 4. Now let's meet some of tonight's players. Brody Whitehair, number four, senior. Dylan Hours, number five, senior. Damani Johnson, eight, junior. Chris Wilson, 20, wide, junior. Max Rosero, number 40, junior. Cannon Dinger, 10, junior. Anyone Jones, number 11, junior. Logan Canfield, number two, junior. Gavin Michael, number 14, senior. Riley Green, number 72, senior. Joseph Richmond, number 61, senior. Caleb Barber Gas, 50, junior. Trevor Bigelow, number 55, junior. Ms. Reed Lister, number 68, junior. Caleb Angelon, number 57, senior. Double Cool Calcini, 65, junior. Luke Gabrazino, number 33, senior. Taren Boda, number 3, sophomore. Xavier Glenn, number 81, senior class. Jordan Wagner, number 1, junior into the final regular season game and it has been a very successful year for you. What has pleased you most about your team this season? No, uh, two is fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tonight from East West Stadium in Fairmont, it's game number 103. 
in the long time series between the Polar Bears and the East Fairmont Bees. It's the East-West game. The Polar Bears have dominated, winning 15 straight, overall 67 wins, 28 losses, and 7 defeats. But this East Fairmont team under coach Shane Eckel is the best the Bees have had in many years, and they have high hopes coming into this game tonight. Eckel is in his fifth season as head coach at East Fairmont, an overall record of 25-24, and 24, but 0-4 against the Polar Bears. I asked him before the game, what are the areas he's most pleased with with his team? Well, I think resiliency and effort. You know, we've had a couple games where we've had to go on the road and kind of battle back, you know, from halftime and different things, and our, our kids didn't quit. They didn't roll over, and that's one of the reasons that we're able to sit here at 8-1. And you look to be a pretty balanced team because you can run the ball and you can throw it. Yeah, that's been a plus for us. You know, the last couple of years we've, we've been a throw first and then run second. But this year, you know, we, we look to run the football and actually throw probably second, but it kind of keeps us a balanced look. How would you describe what your quarterback, Ian Crookshanks, brings to the team? Well, he brings experience, you know, because we're pretty young up front. So I think him being able to help us with some of our calls and what we need to do and those kind of things really helps our offensive line kind of mature, even though we have a bunch of sophomores and a freshman up front. Your opponent, Fairmont Senior, no stranger. How would you describe this polar bear team? Explosive. You know, they, they can score a bunch in a hurry. Uh, you know, and you look at their breakdowns, you know, they go deep on early downs, first and second down. You know, they'll take shots because they're not afraid to get behind the chains because they know they have the playmakers that can go get a third and eight, third and nine, where most traditional teams kind of panic and stay out of those modes. Uh, it doesn't really phase them. So you really have to watch the fact that they'll take a lot of shots early downs. What concerns you most? Uh, probably our secondary with them because we're young. You know, we have freshmen and stuff. So we've got to limit the big plays and try to make them drive the field. That's something that they don't do very well, right? They like to take shots. So we want to try to make them have eight, ten play drives. And if they score, God bless them. But uh, that's how we want the game to go. That's East Fairmont coach Shane Eckel. Ray, how about uh, your impression of this East team the Polar Bears play tonight? Yeah, the, uh, Jeff, they've been playing very well, like you said, 8-1. So, uh, you know, they, they've, been, they've had things going the right direction. Uh, Crookshank's the quarterback, uh, very capable quarterback, uh, dual threat, uh, very capable as a runner and a passer. Uh, they like to run a lot of spread offense, uh, traditional inside zones, some stretch, but they're going to utilize Crookshanks a good bit in the run game, RPOs, they'll use that. Um, and then they will take shots down the field, they'll try to stretch it vertically. Uh, defense, uh, we're going to see 3 4 from them. Uh, you know, a lot of two deep safeties, but they're going to try, try to drop safeties down when they need to to, uh, to help stop the run game. Uh, they're going to try to get pressure from the inside uh, with their linebackers inside, but uh, they like to bring pressure with. Uh, Number five, uh, Hayden Biggie, he's a, he's, a, he's a big part of their blitz package. So uh, we're just going to need to try to take what they can get, what, what they give us. I had a chance to check in with a polar bear player who has roots in this game, and that's lineman Joey Richmond, whose grandfather played in this game many, many years ago. Checked in with him just exactly what that means to him. Uh, Papa on my mother's side, uh, Benny Colbash, he played in this uh, a while back, and he played with like Joe Stodd, all of them. You might know a couple of the names that he played with. Uh, he passed away uh, about my freshman or sophomore year, so I don't believe he got to see the 100th game, which is pretty special, but uh, we've won ever since then, of course. And I just want to keep that tradition going, just like he kept it going, and yep, take this W tomorrow night. Be nice. And this will be your final East West regular season game. Tell me what that means to you. Yeah, at first, you know, you really think about it. And like freshman year, I was like, eh, it's going to be whatever. It's just a football game. But like now that it's really happening, it's kind of special because it's not really a target on you, but you just got to keep that train going, that long uh, history of us, that winning streak and all that. So it, it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be fun. That's Joey Richmond of the Polar Bears playing in this football game, the same field on which his grandfather played many years ago. And, Ray, there's a lot of history for a lot of people when it comes to this football game. Yeah, absolutely. This is, a, this is you know, the game they look and they circle every year. Uh, you know, the kids know each other very well. They've, uh, they've grown up playing the youth leagues together, little league baseball, uh, you know, football, all of these things they, they, they've gotten to know. And sometimes they played even on the same team. So they know each other really well. It, it means a lot. It means a lot to the communities. And uh, uh, it looks like it's going to be a good crowd tonight. Well, we have a big crowd here. And that was to be expected when you have two 
top 10 teams in Class AA playing. Both teams heading on to the field now, and it's a little different. This is a visiting team the Polar Bears are tonight. They are on the near sidelines, east on the far sidelines, so we're not accustomed to seeing the Polar Bears up close uh, broadcasting uh, their games. And, of course, our spot is just a little different as well as we are technically the visiting team here in this game tonight. East has won the coin toss, and they want to kick off to start this game. Polar Bears will get the football first. And things to watch for for the Bees, their quarterback, Ian Crookshanks, has thrown for over 1,400 yards this season, 16 touchdowns, only three interceptions. His number one receiver is Avery Brown with 34 catches. And for the Polar Bears, Brody Whitehair needs 196 passing yards to reach 4,320 for his career. Why is that important? Because he moves ahead of Jared Ferguson into fifth place on the all-time list. And Dylan Hours needs 154 rushing yards to reach 2,000 in his career. And when Brody Whitehair gets his 80th passing yard tonight, he will reach 2,000 for the season. East is going to be kicking off to start this game. And back deep for the Polar Bears, Hours and Canfield. The East kicker is Carson Church. He's a junior. Excellent kicker for East Fairmont. He's become a, a big weapon for them. He kicked a 46-yard field goal earlier this season here at the stadium. So this kid's got, he's got some talent. Yeah, and that's something, Jeff, I think we, you know, look at. They, they, I think they're going to try to utilize that because uh, hopefully they can, uh, they can help win some field position. So Canfield on the far side, Hours on the near side. Kick goes from left to right. It's a short end-over-end -end kick, and Canfield gets it at the 20, goes to the far side, out over the 30, the 35, and up close to the 37-yard line, and that's where the Polar Bears will start out. First down and 10, first play of the game coming up. East in its home uniforms, navy blue jerseys, blue and gold pants, navy helmets, polar bears all white with royal blue numbers and white helmets with a blue polar bear on the side. Start out with white hair in an empty backfield set now. Three receivers to the left from the 37-yard line, two to the right, and it's first down and 10. In motions comes Gavin Michael. And back to pass is Whitehair. Quick pass comes to Michael, catches it at the 40. He gets to the 50, stiff arms the defender, and he is knocked out of bounds in East Fairmont territory, close to the 40-yard line. Yeah, nice nice uh, opening play. Uh, East was in zone coverage. We brought motion across. They didn't adjust with it. So uh, nice, nice, easy pitch and catch for uh, first down. And it goes for 26 yards, so the Polar Bears are quickly in East Territory, first down and 10 at the B's 37. Whiter in the pistol formation now. He has Dylan Hours behind him in motion. Goes Navon Jones, Hours gets the handoff up the middle, hesitates and then goes down at about the 35 yard line. He'll get about three yards on the play, bringing up a second down and seven at the 34. Fairmont quickly to the line of scrimmage now with three receivers to the right side. Second down, seven yards to go. The Polar Bears trying to draw the bees off sides, and they are successful in doing that. One of, one of those Polar Bear secret weapons that they seem to be able to use in situations like this at least once a game. Yeah, and that's something early on in this game. I, th I like the uh, the change of the snap count because that's something they they're a little aggressive early on. The ball's at the 29 now, so it's just second down and two for the Polar Bears. Whitehair has hours behind him. The ball at the East 29, and Brody's back to pass. Has time, sends it down towards the end zone, and the pass is just overthrown, intended for Canfield. He had his defender beaten, but he couldn't come up with the pass. Yeah, like the like the call, we uh, we took a shot. Uh, uh, you know, it was a, was a was a good throw. Uh, we just you know just overthrew a little bit, but uh, I, I like taking the shot there in that situation down a distance. So now the Polar Bears are looking at a third down and two. Hours lines up behind the quarterback, Whitehair, on this third and short play, and he gets the ball right up the middle. He gets the first down 
Takes it down to the 25 yard line, inside the 25, down to about the 22. And it'll be plenty of yardage for the Polar Bears on that play and enough for a first down. It'll be a seven yard gain for Dylan Hours and the Polar Bears get first down number two and have it first and 10 at the east 21 yard line. Yeah, good movement by that offensive line. Nice block by Richmond pulling around. Game just underway. First possession for Fairmont Senior. And Whitehair is back to pass. Sends it into the end zone, and the pass is caught. Hits a polar bear touchdown. Gavin Michael brings it in from 21 yards out, and the polar bears score first and lead it six to nothing. Yeah, that was a laser from Brody. Yeah, that was a that was a nice nice throw. Michael having to go up and catch it over his head, did so in the end zone and made a nice catch and the Polar Bears have the early lead. It's six to nothing on to attempt the extra point. Now for the Polar Bears is Cam Peschel. 40 of 44 this season and he gets the 41st. Timeout on the field, 10-15 to go. First quarter, Fairmont Senior seven, East nothing on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Well, if the Polar Bears are rusty after a two-week break, they took care of the rust pretty quickly. Opening drive, and the Polar Bears take it in and now have a 7 to nothing lead. Kicking off is Peschel. End over end, taken at the 13-yard line. Out over the 15 to the far side of the field by Murphy. Gets to the 20 and is stormed under inside the 25-yard line. And that's where the Bees will go first down and 10. Gavin Murphy, not, big, not a lot of size, 5'7", 112 pounds, but he is really fast. We'll get to see the East Fairmont offense now. An offense led by senior quarterback Ian Crookshanks. He started as a freshman here at East Fairmont, so... You don't have too many quarterbacks that are playing their fourth year in high school. No, and then he's, uh, you know, he's he's played very well this year, so uh, he's he's going to be a challenge to defend tonight. So we're going to have to stay in our rush lanes. Avery Brown is his favorite receiver. He's wide right, and here is the handoff. It goes to Fantasia, takes it out over the 25, up to about the 28-yard line. Wrapped up and brought down there. You get about four yards on the play to bring up a second down and six. The ball at the East 27 in the center of the field as the Bees move from left to right here at East West Stadium in Fairmont. Crookshanks gets a low snap, picks up the football, and he's going to be brought down right at about the line of scrimmage. Dylan Hours had his arms wrapped around him quickly. That was a snap that rolled to the quarterback. You might have heard us talking on the pregame show about what East Fairmont was thinking about doing, and that was coming in with a new center tonight and moving Tristan Ramsey out to a guard spot. Yeah, that's that's so critical. I mean, the snap. Uh, you know, something else to look at early on this game, Jeff, is we're, uh, I see we're playing really tight uh, press coverage, and uh, and that's something, that luxury that we have, that we have the, the corners that can do that. No gain, no loss on that play, so it's third down and six, and Crookshanks will look to go to the air now. He has an empty backfield, three receivers to the right side on this third and six. He's back to pass. He's getting pressure from the side, and he gets away from it, throws on the run downfield. The pass overthrown incomplete. Intended for Cole Van Gilder at midfield, but it was Cannon Dinger there to defend, and the pass is incomplete, but a lot of pressure on Crookshanks, but he did a nice job of getting free. you got to give him credit. I mean, Boda, I thought, was going to get there. Um, he had a really nice move uh, off the edge from the field, um, blitzing, but, uh, but Crookshanks was able to get out of it and still get the ball down the field. I don't know how he did it, but he did. 
And Crookshanks is not just the quarterback, he's also the punter, and he's a pretty good one, too. He'll stand at his 15-yard line. Line of scrimmage is the 27. The punt is away. Line drive punt. That hours comes up and catches at the 38. Goes to the left side. Gets to the 40. There's a flag. The 45, the 50. Inside the 50 to the 45. And a flag thrown on the play right in the area of Damani Johnson. Just a few yards away from where Dylan Hours was on the return. And the official puts the flag down on the 39, which means this is most likely going to take the ball back to the 29-yard line. Conference call at the center of the field. The officials huddled there discussing the penalty pending against the Polar Bears. At least we're anticipating against the Polar Bears. Now we'll get the call from the official. Maybe. One official had his rule book out. That's not a good sign. It's never a good sign. You're no. right, Jeff. <laughs> Block in the back, called against the Polar Bears. Okay, so there were two penalty flags. That's the reason, as there was the illegal block, which was a 10-yard penalty. But there was also another penalty against the Polar Bears, which will be a personal foul penalty. So it takes the ball to the 33-yard line, and it'll be first and 10 there. It's a hit to the head against the Polar Bears. Illegal hit to the head. 33-yard line is where Fairmont goes with 8.31 to go first quarter. And Amani Johnson gets the handoff, and he's hit hard as he takes it out to the 35-yard line and goes down there. So short yardage play for the Polar Bears. Yeah, these last two drives, uh, we've started off the run. Not a long run, but, uh, but again, positive yardage play. Uh, you know, three-yard gain, still second and seven. That's, that's the down and distance we'd rather be in. The ball on the Fairmont Senior 36 on the near hash marks as Fairmont moves from right to left. White here is in the pistol formation. He has Johnson behind him. Dinger is a wide out to the near side. Three receivers to the right side. And there is a pass down the line to scrimmage to Canfield, and it goes out of bounds incomplete. Yeah, it looks like we were just trying to run a, a quick screen um, uh, to Canfield that time, and uh, we just didn't convert. So it's going to bring up a third down for the Polar Bears. Third down and seven yards to go. The Polar Bears need to get to their own 43 for a first down. They're down and long. And here's White here. Back to pass. Passing to the near side. And he overthrows Dinger at the 50-yard line. Incomplete. Not a well-thrown ball by White here. And the Polar Bears will have to give it up on downs. They'll punt it away. Yeah, credit to uh, East Fairmont on that on that series. They kept us in a third and long, and that's not where we want to be. Uh, so that, that, that put a little pressure on us that time, and uh, we were unable to convert. So punting situation for Fairmont. Remember last year it was 4th and 25 in this game, and Dylan Hours decided to run with it. He's the punter. Not this time, though. Punts it away. This is a nice punt by Hours, and it chases Rowan Kramer back to his 17. Slips one tackle, but not the other, and he's going to go down at about the 18-yard line on the far side of the field. Yeah, not only was that a great punt, but that was just really good coverage uh, as well by our, kick, our punt coverage team. It's a 47-yard punt by Dylan Hours. And that's not a typical punt for Dylan, who 
comes into this game having only punted three times but averaging about 25 yards a kick. So now first and 10 east in its own territory, trailing the Polar Bears 7 to nothing. 7.33 on the stop clock here in the first quarter. East with the ball at its own 18-yard line. First down and 10. Crookshanks in the shotgun. Hands it to Fantasia. He's hit by Canfield, and he's going down. No gain on the play. Logan Canfield in there quickly, and he brought him down right on the spot. Yeah, that's a great job by Canfield. That is how you fill a hole. Uh, that's that's how you fill as a linebacker, and that's exactly what he did. When you see space, you should fill it, and that's what he did. We've talked about Logan a lot this season and how he has matured into one of the Polar Bears' best defenders, and he had quite a game the last time out, led the team in tackles and assists. Second down and 10 for the Bees. From their 18, Crookshanks play action pass, sends it downfield. The pass caught by Avery Brown at the 28-yard line, and the Bees have a first down. Yeah, that was a great, great route that time. Uh, we were playing press man, and uh, he was able to get some space and, and, and uh, still make the play. Uh, this is great, the great uh, pass and catch. Yeah, it was a little premature. That's going to be marked back a yard, so it will be third down and one. So Brown gets seven yards on that completion. And now third down one for the Bees at their own 27-yard line. Polar Bears crowding the line of scrimmage. Crookshanks looks to the sidelines, gets a high snap, and then controls it and gets the first down as he takes the football up to about the 20, then is thrown to the turf. Gavin Michael leading the stop for the Polar Bears, but it's a three-yard gain, and it's East Fairmont's first first down of the night. Yeah, Jeff, one, one important thing you can never lose sight of is when you run the quarterback, you get an extra person in the run game, and that's what they were able to do there. They had an extra uh, blocker by using the quarterback as the runner. Penalty flag on the play, which I did not see, and now they've called a false start against the Bees. And that will take the ball back five yards. I did not see the flag. Nor did I see the false start, but that's not unusual. So that first down comes out of the book. And the third and one now becomes a third and six. So totally different scenario now. And the ball is back at the 22. East Trail 7-0. We've played about half of the first quarter now. 6.02 to go. Polar Bear scored on their opening drive. So here's Crookshanks in the shotgun. He has Fantasia to his right. Polar Bears crowd the line of scrimmage, and Crookshanks wants to pass. He's getting pressure, gets out of it, throws it downfield, and the pass intercepted, picked off. Brody Whitehair has it at the 35-yard line, and he's going to go down, and the Polar Bears have the football on the pass interception. Whitehair intercepts Crookshanks, and the Polar Bears get it and will have the football in East Territory at the 36. I tell you, Jeff, it is such such a luxury to be able to play press man like we're playing uh, right now with with our with our cornerbacks. It's just it's really hard as a quarterback when they don't get separation, the receiver doesn't get separation, and uh, that puts a lot of pressure. and uh, And that's what happened, resulted in the interception. So the Polar Bears now, with 5:51 to go in the first quarter, have another possession, but this time in East Territory, starting at the 36-yard line. First down and 10. White Harris thrown. One touchdown pass tonight on the Polar Bears opening drive. And here's an option. Pitch comes to the right to Hours. Hours cuts into the 36, and he'll go down there. He'll get a, about a yard maybe on the play. Let's see where they mark him down. No, call it at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Make it second down and 10. Yeah, I like the play design. We didn't execute uh, just right, but uh, I did like we, we came with a little gap scheme. We pulled the guard and the tackle, but we we pitched it the other way, and uh, it was kind of like a little counteraction. Uh, like the design of the play, we just didn't get the result we wanted. So now Fairmont looks at a second down and 10 from the East, 36, leading to be 7 nothing, And Whitehair is back to pass. Quick pass comes to Canfield. They lose one tackler at the line of scrimmage and takes it inside the 35 to about the 33. That, that play didn't look good because there was nobody blocking and two East defenders coming at Canfield right after he caught it. Yeah, I, I don't know if that was a little miscommunication there by the receivers, but you got to credit Canfield for still making something out of nothing. So it's going to be third down and seven, a three-yard gain on that pass play. Polar Bears in four-down territory, though. 
at the East 33. Empty backfield, and the Bees have jumped off sides again. So the third and seven will become a third and two. East Fairmont fans frustrated. <laughs> such a such a crucial penalty when you've got a team third and seven, and you, all of a sudden it becomes third and two. It changes everything drastically, especially with the polar bears in four down territory at the East 28. Now the empty backfield set for the Polar Bears, and White here, low snap, back to pass, sends it downfield to the sidelines, caught by Dylan Hours at the 15, and he takes it down out of bounds inside the 15-yard line, close to the 10. Yeah, great protection by that uh, uh, Fairmont senior offensive line. They run a high-low concept and uh, just hit uh, Hours there in the flat, or in the out route, excuse me, and uh, just a really good pitch and catch. 18-yard pass play, Polar Bear first down, number four, and Fairmont Senior first and goal just inside the 10. And here's White here giving it to Hours, getting outside to the right. Goes to the sideline, stiff arms a defender at about the five, cuts inside at the five, takes it into the end zone. It's a Polar Bear touchdown. Yeah, that's a great job by Hours. Uh, that's that's how you set up a, uh, a run. He, uh, you know, he pressed it up into the line and then he bounced it. And, uh, and drew the defense into him real tight, and then uh, and then just just went to the edge and, and, and got there. A nice nice run. Dylan Hours scores the touchdown. That's his 35th career touchdown for Fairmont Senior. His 14th this season. Special to attempt the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Timeout on the field. 3:59 left. First quarter from Fairmont. It's the Polar Bears 14, East Fairmont nothing on Fun 93-1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, home-style food and great value go hand-in-hand hand with favorites like slow-simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. Fairmont Senior scoring touchdowns on two of its first three possessions, and now the Polar Bears have a 14 to nothing lead as Cam Peschel is set to kick off. Murphy back deep for the Bees, and the kick comes to him at the 10. He goes to the right side, gets up to the 15, comes back this way, and he's hit, breaks free, gets up to the 20, the 25, and up close to the 30-yard line. Nice run for Gavin Murphy. He seemed to be stopped back close to the 15, but he got an extra 15, takes it up close to the 30-yard line. Yeah, it looked like we had that covered pretty well, but uh, you know, credit to uh, credit to him. He, he still, uh, still got up the field and got a positive game. They'll set it down at the 28, and that's where East goes first and 10 with 3.49 on the clock. Polar Bears have Bracero, the nose spot, Arbogast and Bigelow on either side of him. Outside linebackers, Boda and Ours. Inside linebackers, Michael and Canfield. First down 10 for the Bees. Crookshanks gives it to Fantasia. Little opening out over the middle, and he takes it over the 30 to about the 36-yard line. Best play of the night for the Bees. Yeah, pretty well executed play by uh, the uh, uh, Bees offensive line. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Crookshanks hands it off again, and it's taken back to the line of scrimmage, and that'll be all. Fairmont was really in on that play and handled it well. Fantasia gets nothing. It'll be third and two. Yeah, they try to run a power play that time, try to kick out uh, a Bigelow, and Bigelow did a nice job squeezing it and uh, forcing the running back back inside. Third down and two from the East Fairmont 36. Clock turns down to three minutes to go here in the first quarter. And now the Polar Bears have jumped offside, so I guess it's fair. Yeah, you always see that in this type of game. Uh, you know, early on, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of adrenaline that's flowing. Flowing and, and uh, so 
that's something that uh, you have to kind of channel and kind of get under control. So five-yard penalty goes against the Polar Bears. East Fairmont gets his first first down of the night. And the Polar Bears get their second penalty of the night. First down, 10 Bs at their own 41-yard line. And the Polar Bears have jumped off sides again. And again, it's Bowden and Bigelow on the left side of the Polar Bear defense jumping. So that makes it first down and five. First down, five yards to go for the Bees, and the officials call time at the line of scrimmage. And now they reset the clock and start it. First and five for the Bees. Chance to get a little creative here and see if they'll try to pass the ball down the field. Fantasia to the right of Crookshanks. Wide out to the near side is Avery Brown. Long count for Crookshanks, and now a design run. Takes it off the right side, inside the 50 and down to the 48-yard line. Wrapped up and brought down there. Canfield and Michael in on the stop for the Polar Bears. Yeah, another, another well-executed running play by, uh, by the East Fairmont offensive line. Uh, that time they, they were trying to run a little power play, and uh, we got caught up the hill too far. First down and 10 at the Fairmont senior 48-yard line. First time the Bees have been in Polar Bear territory tonight, and it comes with two minutes to go in the first quarter, and the Polar Bears on top, 14-0. And now there's a, a whistle at the line of scrimmage. Offsides against East Fairmont this time. That just simply meant that they lined up offsides. So it's almost like you're looking at the first game of the year for both teams with these line of scrimmage penalties, which you don't typically see this deep into the year. About a five-yard penalty against East. That's its third five-yard penalty at the line of scrimmage. First down 15 now from the East 47-yard line. And the quarterback, Crookshanks, play action pass, sets up. Chased out of the pocket, chased from behind and brought down at about the 48-yard line. Stopped by Trevor Bigelow of the Polar Bears. It's not a sack because he actually gained a yard, and it will be second down and 14 coming up for East Fairmont. Yeah, Bigelow was pretty relentless in his uh, pursuit of Crookshanks there. But, uh, you know, I'll tell you, those two corners on the outside, I think you got to give them credit for that as well. They're uh, Again, we're playing press man, and that, that's really hard to get off the line because they're able to do that pretty successfully right now. Second and 14 for the Bees. Inside a minute to go, opening quarter. Handoff goes to Fantasia. Bumped at the line of scrimmage and breaks free inside the 50 to 45 and down close to the 43-yard line. Not enough for the first down, but the Bees are going to be close now. It's going to be about third down and five. And they'll need to run this play. So Fantasia gets nine yards on that carry. He averages 124 yards a game for the Bees. So third down and five from the Polar Bear 43. Kirk Shanks has Fantasia lining up behind him now. And there's movement at the line of scrimmage again. And this is a false start against the Bees. So the line of scrimmage penalties just continue to accumulate. That's the fourth called against the Bees. Two have been called against Fairmont. So that's six here in the first quarter. I mean, you usually don't see that many in an entire game. Yeah, that's got to be frustrating for both coaches. Like you said, these uh, you know, mistakes, you know, you don't like to see them happening this uh, this late in the year. Uh, you know, Fairmont Senior, I know, has been uh, off for two weeks, so there's uh, you know there's been a little bit of a gap between the last game. So 
Uh, hopefully we can get that corrected. And the first quarter has come to an end here at East West Stadium in Fairmont. A good start for the Polar Bears. After one quarter, it's Fairmont Senior 14. East Fairmont nothing on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that golden boot pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. Best of luck tonight and in the future for the high school seniors. Third down, 10 for the B. Starting the second quarter now, East Fairmont looking at a third down and 10. The football marked at the Fairmont senior 48 yard line. The Polar Bears leading 14 to nothing. East Fairmont with quarterback Crookshanks in the pistol formation. And he is back to pass, getting pressure from Arbogast. Steps up in the pocket, now getting pressure from behind. Arbogast has him, and he sacks him near midfield. And it'll bring up a fourth down and 11 for the Bees. Tremendous job by that uh, you know, polar bear off our defensive line. To be able to get pressure with just bringing the, uh, just the defensive line, no, no blitz behind it, uh, dropping seven. Uh, that's that's huge. That that makes it very difficult on a quarterback. So punting situation now, and Crookshank stands back at his 38-yard line. Good snap, punts it away. Line drive punt, and Hours lets it roll. Rolls inside the 10, and it's going to be down at about the six-yard line. And that's where the Polar Bears will go with their first possession of the second quarter. 11-10 showing on the clock, and the score shows Fairmont on top, 14 to nothing. Going to be checking other games going on tonight. Although the playoff positioning for Fairmont Senior seems pretty well set. Polar Bears win, they finish third. We won't even think about the other option. First and 10 at the six yard line. And White here has Damani Johnson in the backfield now. Behind him, Arbogast the setter for the Polar Bears. High snap, ball comes to Johnson, breaks free out over the 10, he's up to the 15, spun around and then goes back down at about the 13 yard line. Pick at the 12. Gain of about six on the play, and it'll bring up a second down and four. Yeah, nice run and uh, nice job on that uh, right side, that off, uh, offensive line. Uh, gets a really nice block from, uh, from Bigelow. Off the offensive line for the Polar Bears includes Angeline and Richmond, Dawson, and Bigelow. Second down four from the Polar Bear 12. Again, Johnson. Sets up behind the quarterback, White here. And Brody's back to pass. Sets up, pumps once, now runs out of the pocket, runs to the near side, has some room, gets out over the 10, the 15, the 20, and then runs out of bounds. It's a Fairmont senior first down as they'll mark him out close to the 25-yard line, a 13-yard run. Yeah, great job by White here. He tried to uh, to hold on as long as he could in the pocket, and uh, you know when it wasn't there, uh, he took off and got positive yardage. That's uh, that's what you like to see. But he didn't take off too early. He made sure that uh, there there wasn't anything there. They set it back at the 23. It will be first and 10 for the Polar Bears from there. A little more breathing room now, though, after this 
possession started at the six. Canfield comes in motion and Johnson gets the handoff and Johnson carries it up the middle, takes it to the 26 yard line. Fantasia from his linebacker spot makes the tackle. Stop on the play. Number 33, Dominic Fantasia. Three yard gain for Damani Johnson. And it's second down and seven. Dylan Hours is a wide out to the left along with Canfield and Dinger. Navon Jones wide right. White here on a second and seven from his own 26 yard line and flags at the line of scrimmage again. False start is the call against the Polar Bears. So that takes the football back at the 21 yard line. Second and 12 for the Polar Bears, leading here 14 to nothing. Three receivers left, one to the right. White here, back to pass. Looks, chased out of the pocket. Now runs towards the sidelines, and he tries to throw the ball away, and it's almost intercepted. And now a flag is thrown as that's going to be grounding. Brody just made a couple of major errors there. Yeah, they got a little pressure that time, and, uh, and like I said, it was, just a, it was just a play that just went bad that time. Intentional grounding called against White Arrow. He had the chance to throw it away before then, but then started running and knew he was going to be in trouble behind the line of scrimmage. And then when, it's, when he was being twisted around, he just kind of lobbed the ball towards the sidelines and an East defender came diving in and almost caught it. It's going to take the ball all the way back inside the five. Ball's coming back to the four yard line. So Whitehair is charged with a loss back to the eight and then a four yard penalty. This is where we have to be careful here with third and uh, 29. We need to make sure that uh, you know we protect really well here. Third down. Third down coming up for the Polar Bears. That is a loss of down on the play. Whitehair stands in his end zone. Empty backfield, he's back to pass. Has time, now chased around in the end zone. Now he's running, and he runs to the sidelines, gets up to the 10 to 15, and run out of bounds on the far side of the field. Just too many yards to gain, though, for him to be able to scramble for a first down. Gets it out of trouble, but still it's going to be fourth and long for the Polar Bears inside the 20. Yeah, that drive looked promising when we first started, but uh, you know, got behind the chains. And, uh, you know, third and 29 is really too, is, that's, that's too hard to come, overcome. And uh, so uh, we just need to, to punt and, and uh, play defense now. So fourth down, 15 yards to go for Fairmont Senior. In its own territory, ball set down. At the 18, high snap at hours, brings it down, punts it away. This is a nice floater that is going to hit at the 50, take a Fairmont roll inside the 40 and down inside the 35 to the 33 yard line. That'll be a 48 yard punt for Dylan Hours, who, who just had a 47 yarder the last time he punted. So the bees get it, 9.02 to go after a, the Polar Bears poorest possession of the night. So East Fairmont coming to the line of scrimmage now, trying to solve the Polar Bear defense. Nitro leading Scott. 21 to six in the second quarter in class double A. Scott, you know, is undefeated. First down for the Bees. Football marked at the 33 yard line. Crookshanks hands it off to Fantasia, looking for an opening and he is hit at about the line of scrimmage and then falls forward for a yard. Hours had his hands on him first. Give him two up to the 35 and make it second down and eight. 
Fantasia, 23 yards rushing tonight on six carries. And now a timeout called, 8.41 to go, second quarter from East West Stadium. The score, Fairmont Senior 14, East Fairmont nothing on Fun 93-1. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia, and when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We have that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. All right, thanks. It's second down and eight for the Bees at their own 35-yard line, trailing the Polar Bears 14-0. And Crookshanks hands it off again, and Fantasia is hit at the line of scrimmage. No place to go. This time it was Arbogast who brought him down, and it's going to bring up a third down and long for the Bees. Yeah, great job by uh, uh, Fairmont senior defensive line getting push uh, with, with, our, with, our, with our defensive line. They, uh, they did a really nice job on that running play. So now it's going to be third down and eight. East has had trouble converting so far in the first half. They have just two first downs. The ball at their own 35-yard line. Crookshanks out of the shotgun. Play action pass. Has time. Sends it to the far side. Overthrown. Incomplete and intercepted. The Polar Bears have the ball along the sidelines. And it is Damani Johnson there saying he was out of bounds. The ball was juggled. And that's one of those you'll have to have the replay review, Ray Frazier. <laughs> We're looking at it right now. I think, uh, I think it was pretty close. Close. <laughs> Pretty close, but yeah, it's fourth it was... down and eight for the Bees now. Pardon us while we watch TV. Yeah. <laughs> fourth and eight, a punting situation for Crookshanks, and he just gets that one away. Line drive caught by Dylan Hours at the 32. He gets up to the 40 and is still running. <laughs> and goes down, nice tackle as the East defender just wouldn't let him go. That was Tristan Boone on the stop. And first and 10, Fairmont senior, 7.42 to go here in the first half. And the Bears lead at 14-0. Last, last year when these two teams played, East led 7-6 at one time. And then the Polar Bears went up near the end of the first half to lead 14-7. Then when we started the second half, East fumbled the kickoff, the Polar Bears scored. East threw an interception, the Polar Bears scored. And just like that, a 14-7 game became a 30-7 game in the third quarter and Fairmont rolled. Yeah, you can kind of see that in these rivalry games. They try to you know, test each other and see what's going on first, but uh, uh, that, that can kind of happen in these games. Here is the end around coming to Navon Jones wide to the left side. He gets up to the 40, to the outside at the 50. He's at the 45, down the sidelines at the 40. Stops along the sidelines and is knocked out of bounds. And a nice big gain for Navon Jones and the Polar Bears on the end around. Yeah, creative play design that time by, uh, by yeah, Mark Sampson. Uh, you know, Bears. used the uh, momentum of the defense, and uh, they haven't shown really any counter yet. So that time uh, uh, got uh, defense, the defense uh, going too far one direction. 24-yard gain for Navon Jones, and the Polar Bears get a first down. First down number six. White here in the pistol formation. And hands it up the middle this time. And the ball is lost. A fumble, and the Bees appear to have recovered. Dom Fantasia recovers the fumble. And the Bees have the ball. Yeah, that's that's something uh, we've got to stay away from. It looked like uh, did a good job getting, uh, getting the helmet in on the, on the football and uh, caused the turnover. So Dylan Hours, guilty of the fumble, and the Bees have the ball with 7.13 to go in the second quarter, trailing 14 to nothing.
So Fairmont Senior guilty of the turnover. And East Fairmont right back on offense now. At its own 45, 7.13 to go in the second quarter. Hand off to Fantasia, trying to get wide to the right, and he'll go down at about the 47, maybe the 48-yard line, a gain of maybe three on the play. Yeah, they run the inside zone, which is their bread and butter. They like to run it all the time, but uh, uh, nice job by Fantasia cutting it back. He's gained 26 yards on eight carries tonight, and it's second down and seven for the Bees. Kirkshanks has struggled passing. He's just one for three, one, inter or one for four, rather, with one interception. Second down, seven yards to go for the Bees. And there is a whistle at the line of scrimmage. And a flag is thrown. And another false start penalty is called. Flag on the play. These violate the neutral zone. And uh, uh, Coach Eckel talked about uh, having a young offensive line, and, and sometimes when you have that young offensive line, they've got to go against a veteran uh, defensive group like the Polar Bears have. It puts a little pressure, and uh, they get a little antsy, and I think that's kind of what's happening early on in this game. So now it's second down and 12 for the Bees. The ball comes back to the East 43, 6.18 on the clock. It's turning now in the second quarter. Crookshanks has Fantasia behind him on this second and long. And here is Crookshanks back to pass, getting pressure. Coming to the near side of the field, he is grabbed by Arbogast, and he is sacked back at the 35-yard line. Boda came over to help out, and a big loss for the Bees on that play. Yeah, just relentless pressure by that defensive front. They just were not going to be denied. Uh, this is just a great job of getting the pressure on him. First he got out of it, and uh, I don't know how he did, but uh, but that that's just a relentless pressure by our defensive front. Quarterback sacked at the 35-yard line. The officials having another conference. And a penalty flag. Face mask is called against Fairmont. So Crookshanks lost 11 on that play. Polar Bears get a 15 yard penalty and the Bees come back now third down and nine. The ball at the 46 yard line, 5.58 to go in a penalty filled first half here from East West Stadium. The 103rd meeting of these two schools. Crookshanks is in the pistol formation. Second down, long play, handoff to Fantasia, crosses the line of scrimmage and then is hit and goes down. Hours and Canfield on the tackle for Fairmont. No gain on the play. It'll be third down and about nine. Yeah, this will be interesting to see what Coach Eckel decides to do here. Um, you know, we're, we're playing really tight press coverage, and uh, it's it's very, very hard for those receivers to get off the line. Our corners are doing an excellent job. Third down, about eight and a half yards to go for the Bees now at their own 46 and a half yard line. Quarterback Crookshanks fakes it to Fantasia, getting pressure, runs out of the pocket to the far side, and he is sacked again, back inside the 40 yard line. Yeah, Jeff, that's just team defense. I mean, our coverage is just excellent. I'm watching them going down the field and there. there's nowhere to go with the football. There's no window, nowhere to go. And so he had nowhere to go. So that that just, it, it allows our defensive line a little extra time to get there. He had pressure from the outset going back to pass that time and the Polar Bears sack him. And now putting situation for Crookshanks again. Line of scrimmage is the East 39. It's fourth and 16. Line drive punt and Hours goes back and gets it at the 18. Comes up the sidelines to the 25, the 30, and hit along the sidelines at the 35 and goes out of bounds close to the 37 yard line. And that's where Fairmont will start this possession with 4.17 to go in the first half. Tristan Boone, first on the stop for the D. Run out of here. Put away. 
So the Polar Bears now looking to get the offense in gear. They struggled the last time they had possession of the ball. Navon Jones switches from the right to the left side as a receiver. The Polar Bears have three receivers to the right and Jones, the lone receiver to the left. It's first down and 10 and Whitehair is back to pass. Passes to the sidelines and throws it behind Dinger at the 45 incomplete. Yeah, credit East that time, pretty, pretty good coverage on that play. Brody's completed four of eight passes for 68 yards tonight, one touchdown. Second and 10 for the Polar Bears. Fairmont's usually a little better in the passing game than they have been so far tonight. Two receivers to the left and three to the right. White are getting pressure, blitz coming, screen pass to Denger, catches it at the 40, but took too much time. And he's brought down at the 38 yard line. Yeah, Jeff, we had the right call on. We just didn't execute it the way uh, uh, that we, we typically do, but uh, I do like the call. We had the right call with the blitz coming. So the Polar Bears now with a third down and eight, the ball at the 39 yard line in Fairmont Senior Territory. The clock turns down to three minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the first half. Fairmont led 14 nothing in the first quarter, and that's where we are now 14 nothing, closing out the first half. Whitehair in the pistol formation on this third down play. He's back to pass, sets up, fires to the sidelines, and the pass is caught by Dinger at midfield, and he goes out of bounds. It's a polar bear first down just inside the 50-yard line. Yeah, good-looking play all the way around. We execute real well uh, in protection and uh, give Brody the chance to step into the throw, and, and when that happens, good things happen. And that's the polar bear offense we're used to seeing in the passing game, a crisp pass, a nice catch along the sidelines, and a first down. And the Polar Bears now have it in East Territory at the 49 with 321 on the clock, stopped on the out-of-bounds play. Cannon Dinger, back-to-back -back catches for the Polar Bears. Here is Whitehair on a keeper to the right side. Inside the 45, reaches the ball out to get some extra yardage and goes out-of-bounds at about the 43-yard line. It'll be a six-yard gain. Yeah, that was a really good uh, decision by Brody. Uh, you know, they were running a little gap scheme where they pulled the guard and the tackle to the left, and he read the end uh, collapsing down and pulled it and got six yards. That was a nice job. So the ball at the 43-yard line where it's going to be second down and four for the Polar Bears now. White here in the pistol formation, and he's back to pass again. Now chased out of the pocket, fires it downfield towards the sidelines, and it is caught by Navon Jones at the 15-yard line, and he's brought down just along the sidelines at about the 13, a big polar bear first down. Yeah, great route by Navon Jones that time. That, uh, that you know, that that couldn't have been thrown any better because I mean there was about four defenders around him, and uh, he put it, uh, Brady put it where it needed to be. So the Polar Bears now 7 of 11 through the air for 112 yards, and all of a sudden the passing game has come alive, and the Polar Bears' offense has two. First and 10 from the East 12 with 2.50 to go in the second quarter. Whitehair back to pass, running to the near side, throwing it into the end zone, overthrows the intended receiver, Dylan Hours, who was open in the back of the end zone, but the pass was thrown about three or four feet above his hands, and it's second and 10. Yeah, we rolled uh, Brody out to the right and uh, had a little high-low concept, and uh, he just, he'd like to have that one back. He had, uh, he had Dylan wide open. Timeout on the field, officials time, injured player, so this is a momentary time. Polar Bears come through the sidelines to take advantage of this stoppage of play well next week will be the first round of the state playoffs and it looks as if east fairmont and fairmont senior will both have home field advantage now you're probably wondering okay how does that work fairmont would be the higher seed but remember 
the decision of when to play belongs to the visiting team. So the higher seeded visiting team has the first choice. East Fairmont would be playing the higher seeded visiting team. So East's game would have first choice. The choice belonging to the visiting team. So let's say their opponent, which looks to be Herbert Hoover, wants to play Friday night. They would get that slot and the Polar Bears most likely playing Wayne would be relegated to a Saturday afternoon game and that would be the choice of Wayne. Of course, their options would be a little limited because they would have the second pick for a game played at this site. So that's the way it works. North Marion has a home game and they don't have to worry because they're going to play when their opponent decides that game is going to be played over the weekend. Very well explained, Jeff. I feel like I've learned something. I tell you, that's, <laughs> you know, initially when you hear it and you think, now wait a minute, Fairmont Senior is the higher seed and East Fairmont gets to have the game when its opponent wants. But you have to flip it and think, okay, imagine if you were East Fairmont's opponent and saw that the team that finished below you had first choice on when to play the game. That doesn't seem right now. So it all seems to work out, and uh, it'll be the only time, most likely, that the two teams would have that concern. So Has that ever happened before? Were no. we played, I was going to say, never. I didn't think it has. Never has yeah. happened before. So now, second down and 10 for the Polar Bears at the East 12-yard line. The Polar Bears have a 14-0 lead. Love to get one more on the board before halftime. Damani Johnson in the backfield alongside Whitehair. And when that happens, you just need to look in the receiving core to find number five, and that's Dylan Hours, and he's lined up wide to the right. Hours comes in motion this way, and he gets the handoff sweeping to the right side. Hours cuts the corner at the 10 over a defender at the seven and goes towards the sidelines, but doesn't go out of bounds close to the five yard line. You know, as this offense has evolved over the year, uh, as the years progressed, I mean, I, I think Damani Johnson being able to play in the backfield like he has, uh, you know, that, that really has allowed, uh, you know, us to use Dylan, all, you know, all over the place. And then you saw right there on that jet sweep. Five yard gain for Dylan Hours, third down and five coming up for the Polar Bears now. Three receivers left, two to the right. White here, empty backfield, takes the snap, looking to the right, fires it hard into the end zone, and the pass is broken up incomplete. It's broken up by the beast, Tristan Boone. Yeah, that's a difficult thing when you run uh, empty protection or, or with no backs in the backfield for additional protection. Sometimes that, that defender gets on you pretty quick, and that's what happened that time. And Brody threw the ball a little behind the intended receiver, and now it's fourth down for the Polar Bears. Five yards to go, and Fairmont will go for it in this situation. The game clock shows two minutes left in the first half. Empty backfield. White here to pass, steps up, fires into the end zone. Then the pass is caught, hits a Polar Bear touchdown. Cannon Dinger catches it in the end zone for the Polar Bear TD, a five-yard touchdown pass. There's a flag on the play, and Dinger is going to get hit with the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after the touchdown. Yeah, East, uh, East ran an overload blitz that time, and... Uh, you know, Brody did a really nice job of, uh, uh, you know, of reading the, the blitz and, and, and replacing and throwing the ball where, uh, where the blitz came from. Unsportsmanlike conduct call against the Polar Bears will be assessed on the kickoff. You really don't like to see that with a minute 54 to go because now you're kicking off instead of from the 40 at your own 25, and that gives East field position. It's just these kinds of penalties that drive adults crazy. Yeah, and, and, and the other thing is, you know, especially going into uh, the last couple minutes of the half, you don't want to take any chance of, of giving the other side any, uh, any momentum. Cam Peschel ready to attempt the extra point. Canfield holds. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Timeout on the field with a minute 54 to go. First half from East West Stadium. It's the Fairmont Polar Bears 21. East Fairmont nothing on Fun 93-1. 
1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design and build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. All right, okay, I feel better. Okay. Fairmont Senior ready to kick off to the Bees with now a 21 to nothing lead. We're nearing the end of the first half. But now Cam Pesha will kick it off from the 25 yard line. Actually, now it's going to be Cannon Dinger kicking off. It's ironic, Dinger's the one who got the penalty. And now the coaching staff says, okay, now you kick off from the 25. Although Cannon's got the kind of leg that he can overcome that 15 yard dif distance if he puts his foot into it. He'll kick it from left to right. The returners come up to about the 20 yard line. And here is Dinger's kick. End over end, high, nice kick. Caught at the 21 yard line. Carried up over the 25 by Boone, the 30, and then towards the sidelines at about the 35 yard line. Stop on the play was made by the Polar Bears, Tristan Wills. Flag on the play, back at about the 43 yard line at the other end of the field. Personal foul called against Fairmont Senior and East Fairmont, so the penalties will offset. So it's almost as though it never happened. The ball comes back to the 35. Those were dead ball fouls, so you don't have to kick it again. And East has it at the 35. That's really about the best the Polar Bears could have hoped for under the circumstances. East starting at its own 35. The interesting stat so far in this game is that Ian Crookshanks has only thrown for seven yards. Yeah, and, and Jeff, I think a lot of that has to do with our with our defense, especially in particular our corners. I mean, they have played lights out tonight. First down and 10 for the Bees. Crookshanks has an empty backfield set now. And officials time at the line of scrimmage. Problem corrected. And he's ready to go now. Again, it's Crookshanks. Sends Gavin Murphy in motion behind him. And Crookshanks, quarterback keeper, a design run up the middle. Gets it to the 38-yard line. Hit and brought down there. Several white jerseys were there. One of them was Dylan Hours. And another one was Trevor Bigelow. And now timeout called by the Polar Bears with a minute 37 to go in the second quarter. Timeout, Fairmont Senior. The score, the Polar Bears 21, East Fairmont nothing on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of blue pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. A couple of games going on in Class AA that are really weird right now, but it's still early. Oak Glen leading Roan County 14-13 in the second quarter. Oak Glen has won one game. Roan is 8-1, and, and Nitro leads Scott 21-6 in the second quarter. Scott is the only remaining undefeated team in Class AA and rated above the Polar Bears. So, East comes out now, second down and seven. Fairmont Senior calling timeout. It's a, a statement of confidence in your defense. 
because you would think it would be the other way around. East would like to get on the scoreboard and score here, but the Polar Bears call timeout to perhaps get the ball back. Murphy goes in motion again, and Crickshank swings it over to Murphy out of the backfield, and it's incomplete. That stops the clock with a minute 33 to go. Yeah, but I, I like the aggressiveness of Coach uh, Bardick and, and trying to steal another possession for another offensive possession for the, uh, the end of this half. Yes, because East will get the football to start the second half. And the Polar Bears have a three-touchdown lead, 21-0. East Fairmont lost its first game of the season to North Marion, and the Bees haven't lost since. Third down, seven. Murphy goes in motion again behind Crookshanks, and Crookshanks back to pass, getting pressure, chased out of the pocket, runs to the far side of the field. He's going to get the first down as he takes it up to the 50-yard line, and he'll be brought down there. It'll be a gain of 12 yards. That's the, the one danger. We have pretty good coverage, uh, but you know, sometimes when you're a man, you lose sight of the quarterback, and, uh, and so that time, Crickshakes took advantage. He's a very savvy runner. That's East Fairmont's third first down, and the clock begins to turn inside a minute 15 to go. We're in the second quarter. Each team has two timeouts left. Crookshanks on another design run. Up the middle, he gets it inside the 50, runs over a polar bear defender, and he'll take the football inside the 45 down to the 43 yard line. Yeah, that's when he's at his best when they run the quarterback power and he's able to get going downhill. So uh, that's something we've got to, we got to shore up. Second down and three now from the Fairmont senior 43 yard line. Crookshanks on another keeper. Takes the ball to the right side. He's going to be stopped short of the first down and just short of the 40-yard line. And the officials stop the clock. Well, now where they've spotted the ball, they are going to uh, give him the first down. Wow. He got really good spot on that one as they spotted the ball at the 40. And East Fairmont gets the first down on the three-yard gain for Crookshanks, and the clock stops with 26 seconds to go. And we have a timeout on the field. 26 seconds left here in the first half. East Fairmont calls its next-to-last timeout. It's the Polar Bears 21. East Fairmont nothing on fun, 93-1. Since 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. 28 seconds on the clock. Crookshanks is in the shotgun. The backfield is empty. He's had lots of pressure so far tonight. He's back to throw. Pressure coming, steps up in the pocket, runs to the far side of the field, throws on the run, and the pass is caught at the 30-yard line. Caught there by Brown, and he'll take it inside the 30 to the 28 with 16 seconds to go. Yeah, you heard Coach Barty talk about it in the pregame, his concern about Kirk Shank's ability to extend plays, and that's what he did right there. He, he got uh, got outside the pocket and uh, gave his receiver time to uh, to cut inside and, uh, and, and made a nice play. And East Fairmont is calling his final timeout. 16 seconds to go in the first half. It's Fairmont Senior 21, East Fairmont nothing on Fun 93-1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, home-style food and great value go hand-in-hand. Hand. 
with favorites like slow simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Nitro continues to lead Scott 21 to 6. Chapmanville over Mann 10 to nothing. Bridgeport leads Lincoln 21 to 7. Lewis County 42, Grafton nothing, second quarter. And RCB on top of Elkins 16 to nothing in the second quarter. Wayne beating Polka 33 nothing, second quarter. Here we are, east with the football at the Fairmont 27, first and 10, 16 seconds to go. The Bees have no timeouts left. And their quarterback, Crookshanks, is in the shotgun formation, back to pass, getting pressure, lofts it down the middle, and the pass is broken up nicely. Polar Bears, Dylan Hours breaking up that pass over the middle, and it's going to be second and 10 with 12 seconds to go. Yeah, the East tries to run four vertical routes, but uh, we bring pressure, and it's, it's just so hard to get rid of it that quick, uh, you know, when you don't have time for the, uh, the receiver to get down the field. Second down and 10. East trails 21-0, but threatening to do a little bit of damage here near the end of the half. The ball at the Polar Bear 27, and Crookshanks is back to pass. He's getting some pressure, runs to the near side, fires a deep and out of the end zone incomplete with four seconds to go. Yeah, great job by uh, Chris Wilson on that blitz. They went pretty much the same blitz that we ran uh, the previous play and uh, flushed him out of the pocket and, uh, and made him uncomfortable and, and uh, was not able to complete the pass. And in that case, he just was getting rid of the ball, getting a lot of pressure. A sack would have ended the half, so now the Bees will attempt a field goal. It'll be a 44-yard attempt for Carson Church. He's already hit a 46-yarder this season. And now timeout called by Fairmont Senior. Polar Bears call time. Four and a half seconds to go in the first half from East West Stadium. The score, the Fairmont Senior Polar Bears 21, the East Fairmont Bees nothing on Fun 93-1. National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. It's third down and 10 for the Bees, but just four and a half seconds to go. So field goal opportunity now coming for Carson Church. They're going to put the ball down at the 34, so it will be a 44-yard attempt. Right down the center of the field, though, he has no angle. It's like a really, really long extra point. And the kick will go from right to left. Snap is there, ball down, kick up, and the kick is no good, wide to the left. And that is the end of the first half. So the first half is in the books. The 103rd East-West game is half over. And the score at halftime, the Fairmont Senior Polar Bears, that's West, 21, the East Fairmont Bees, nothing. The halftime record coming up next on Fun 93-1. An injury, Ed. Ladies and gentlemen, B Nation welcomes the Fairmont Senior High School Polar Bear Marching Band. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. 
We had that gold labu pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia, and when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. At East West Stadium, the Fairmont Senior Polar Bears on top of the East Fairmont Bees by the score of 21 to nothing. And Ray, this game has been a lot like last year's game in that the Polar Bears limited East Fairmont's offense in that game. Same story here in the first half of this one. Yeah, you got you got to give uh, East Fairmont's defense credit. I mean, they uh, you know we we started off pretty pretty clean. I think the first uh, you know, part of the game getting up 14 nothing. But since that time, you got to give East credit. I mean, they've they've played some pretty good defense, and uh, you know they've held us to seven points since then. You talked about it. We've talked about it a lot in the first half. The pressure on Crookshanks has been the difference for the Polar Bears defensively. Yeah, and I, th I think that's kind of been a byproduct of, of our corner play. I mean, our, I, you know, I, I keep going back to it, but I'm, I'm really impressed with how our corners are able to play that press coverage. I mean, they're able to get up uh, really tight to the receivers, and uh, there's really just no windows for him to throw the football. I mean, you saw he made the one play at the end of the half or when he was extending the play, but other than that, I mean, we've really held him in check. So I think as long as we can continue to do that, we, force, we put a lot of pressure on them because the, they – they have difficulty running the football because we're able to stack the line of scrimmage. And Crookshanks has not been comfortable. He hasn't really had a chance to set up in the pocket and be comfortable. He's looking right, he's looking left, and also trying to find a receiver. And like you say, there's not a lot of time, and with the Polar Bears up close on those receivers, there's not a lot of time for them to get the separation. No, it is, it's really good team defense. I mean, like I said, the, the corner's playing really tight coverage, but then we're able to get cover or we're able to get pressure with the, uh, you know, with, with with our defensive line. So with that, I mean, you, you know, you, you've got basically, you know, seven to eight guys dropping in coverage. There's just nowhere to go with the football. And Fairmont offensively has been good enough. They struggled on that uh, one possession where they, they ended up with a fourth down and a long way to go in deep in their own territory in the second quarter. But they've been efficient, scoring three touchdowns first half. Not amazing first half performance, but good enough. Yeah, and, and you know, you'd like to see a little cleaner uh, uh, game offensively, but, uh, you know, I think just like last year, they'll make the adjustments. The coaching staff will make the adjustments in the second half. And I think we'll come out, uh, you know, pretty strong with all, you know, offense in the second half. But I really like to see this time of year us playing the defense that we're playing because that that's that's really what's going to get you to uh, to wheeling and, and, and ultimately win it is, 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 is defense. And we've talked about the fact that both of these teams are assured the postseason and both are well, East Fairmont is almost certainly a short home field regardless of uh, whether it would happen to lose this game to the Polar Bears tonight. So both teams have playoff games in their future next weekend. Let's go down to the field and listen to the Polar Bear marching band.
That's the Paramount Senior Polar Bear Marching Band at halftime at East West Stadium. And when we come back, we have halftime stats, scores around the state, and Ray Frazier's travel on to Orlando, Florida. That's coming up as halftime continues at East West Stadium with the score. Fairmont Senior 21, East Fairmont nothing on Fun 93-1. Okay. been so long since Ray Frazier has been able to give us a Mountaineer update. I almost forget when the last time was that we talked, but I know it's been a while, and I know some good things certainly happened last weekend. You made the trip to Orlando and had a chance to see a really good football game. Yeah, it was. I, I, I think they, uh, you know, they really needed that. It was a much needed win, and uh, you know, they, they've, uh, I've, I think they played really, really well this year. But uh, it was really important to get that win, and uh, and so I, I think they got things going the right direction. Okay, tell me about the atmosphere there at Central Florida. That's uh, people think of Central Florida, you think, well, a small school, but it's one of the biggest schools in the country, college-wise, enrollment-wise but their football program is still evolving mm -hmm. and now new members of the Big 12. Tell me about the atmosphere. Yeah, it was a really nice atmosphere. I mean, they uh, it was their homecoming. Uh, they had, uh, you know, um, for them, they had a pretty good crowd. I mean, uh, you know, it's not as big of a stadium as, as a lot of the Big 12 stadiums, but uh, they, uh, they they did have a really a really good crowd. It was a, it was a good atmosphere, uh, really hot day. <laughs> it was warm enough for you. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you took Our, your jacket off. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I you know that's where I grew up. I, I grew up in Florida, lived there for uh, over 20 years of my life. So uh, I, I I got reminded real quick uh, what the what the heat's like. Now you had a chance, obviously, to see that game firsthand, and uh, all of us watching it on TV had a had a another perspective of it. But as you watch that game. At least from my standpoint, it looked to me like offensively that was one of the best performances of the year. Yeah, I just I think it was a real complete uh, performance by by the offense. I mean, you know, you look at the uh, stats, and I I think we had you know 200 uh, roughly 285 yards rushing, and then uh, I think passing. I can't remember. I think it was like 160, 170, something like that. But you know, when you look at that, uh, that that's that's a pretty complete day. So definitely, I, I think it was a very good offensive day for us. And the, the Mountaineers were able to do both. They were able to throw and run. And 
sometimes we watch games where the running game just wasn't there, which makes the passing game that much more difficult. Yeah, and I mean, you hear, you know, term complimentary football, and, that, and that's what I think happens when you, you know, when you can do both, you can run the football, it opens up the pass, and, you know, we, we uh, were able to get the ball downfield, and that puts pressure on the defense. They can't, you know, put everybody up close to the line of scrimmage, and then that opens up the running lane. So um, I just think it was a total complete win, uh, you know, everybody, uh, and then, you know, all three phases uh, playing well. All right, I'm sure that you have done your scouting now on Brigham Young because <laughs> not only are you scouting the high schools, but you have to scout <laughs> colleges too. So tell me what you know about this team that the Mountaineers will face tomorrow night. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. I mean, they, they're they five and three just like us. And, uh, you know, they, they've kind of had, you know, up and down. I mean, they, uh, you know, they've had some moments where they played well. I know last week they didn't play as well as they wanted to against Texas. But, um, have very capable offense. Uh, you know they, uh, you know they, they're 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 going to to be a challenge, and uh, they're big up front. So uh, it, it's it's typical Big Twelve. It's it's going to have to be who comes to play. When you look at Brigham Young defensively, as I'm sure you have, what do you see? Uh, yeah, they. I mean, I think you're going to give you know uh, even front, which you know that's a lot of four man front. But uh, but like I said, they're really big interior. They uh, they have uh, you know I think uh, you know they're 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 going to be uh, a challenge to move for our offensive line. So uh, that's something that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to really play well in the run game. You so. mentioned the offensive line and injuries have really accumulated along that offensive line, and we're able to see the fact that there is some depth there. Absolutely. Uh, you know I think they've kind of talked about it this week I mean they've had guys that they've had insert there but they have full confidence in uh, you know they the, the seven guys that are playing uh, the line share of the snaps right now they really uh, uh, feel good about all of them if they have to interchange them and, and that's just uh, really credit to them and can coach more of the depth that they uh, they developed over time and uh, that's a that's a that's a big deal this time of the year especially tell me about Zach and how he's how he's handling the, the physical nature of these games week in and week out and how does he feel this time of year yeah I mean I, I think I mean everybody I mean it, no matter what level of football you play when you get to the you know the last part of your season I mean it's always going to be tough but you know I, I think the thing that uh, you know Zach uh, you know if you're asking about him in particular I think he takes care of his body real well he takes advantage of all the recovery he can do and uh, so those are things that I think he he, uh, he really, you know, takes very serious, and I think that, that helps this time of year. So coming up uh, Saturday night, Brigham Young with perhaps a different starting quarterback. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the, that's the word on the street, um, you know, but, you know, the thing about it is, uh, you know, if it is the, uh, the backup quarterback, which it's looking that way, uh, he looks to be a very capable uh, quarterback from what I understand. I mean, I know, I think he, he played very well in the JUCO ranks, and, uh, you know, he was probably, I think he was, the ranked the number one uh, junior college uh, quarterback coming out last year in the recruiting class. So, it, you know, we'll, we'll have our hands full no matter what. We, we it's, it's Big 12. It's what you expect. And for those who don't know, Brigham Young's starting quarterback had transferred from Pitt and played against the Mountaineers last year in the that opening game. Yeah. And so seeing him again was going to be kind of interesting, but it looks like that might not happen. Yeah, it looks it's it's looking that way. It's looking like it's going to be a different quarterback, but uh, you know, whoever whoever they put out there I know is going to be very capable. I mean, it's 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 the way it always is. I mean, you know, we've uh, you know, and we've we've had some uh, some tough matchups when backup quarterbacks have had to play in the past. So I mean, we have to be ready for whoever plays. So when you're a Mountaineer fan, you get nervous no matter if it's the <laughs> number one quarterback, the number two, or the third quarterback. It right. just always makes you nervous. So. Yeah, it, I mean it does. I mean, you just you know, you know, um, obviously anybody that they, they they put out there is going to be a very capable quarterback, and uh, so they're they're going to be uh, you know something that we have respect for. So we're just going to have to get after uh, whoever's there and then try to make them uncomfortable. So that is our West Virginia Mountaineer update. Ray Frazier back on the job after <laughs> an extended leave of absence, but it's certainly good to have you back. Yeah, and, good to be back. And it's nice to have you back after a win, too. Yeah, that's right. We're even happier to see you there. That's exactly right. <laughs> Halftime is continuing here at East West Stadium, the busy B band on the field. Let's go ahead for impartiality's sake and pick up their music.
That's the East Fairmont Busy Bee Band on the field at halftime. The score at the half, Fairmont Senior 21, East Fairmont nothing. Halftime continues after this on Fun 93-1. Halftime is winding down here at East West Stadium in Fairmont where the Polar Bears hold a 21 to nothing lead over their crosstown rivals, the East Fairmont Bees. Let's check the first half stats. For Fairmont Senior, nine first downs, the Bees have four. Rushing yards, East Fairmont 43, Fairmont Senior 83. Through the air, the Bees have completed Two of eight passes for 19 yards, one interception. And the Polar Bears have completed eight of 13 passes for 119 yards, no interceptions, and two touchdowns. Total offense, Fairmont Senior, 204, East Fairmont, 62. Leading rusher for the Polar Bears is Dylan Hours, 25 yards on six carries for the Bees. Dom Fantasia, nine carries, 27 yards. Penalties have been a factor in this game. Both teams have been hit with several. The Bees have five penalties, 25 yards. The Polar Bears, seven flags for 59. Recapping the scoring, the Polar Bears on their first possession take it in with 10-15 to go in the opening quarter. A 21-yard pass to Gavin Michael from Brody Whitehair. Special's extra point made it 7-0. Then later on in the first quarter, the Polar Bears scored on their third possession. This time it was a 10-yard run by Dylan Hours. Extra point was by Pesha was good. Polar Bears had a 14-0 lead just inside four minutes to go in the opening quarter. And then in the second quarter, early on, it was Cannon Dinger catching a seven-yard touchdown pass from Whitehair. The extra point was good. 21 to nothing, the score at the half. The Bees threatened a little near the end of the first half, but a field goal attempt from 44 yards out was wide left, and the Polar Bears took that 21 to nothing lead into the locker room at the half, and that's where we stand now. Fairmont on top, 21 to nothing. Let's take a look at some of the scores going on around the state. Still a couple of surprising games so far, but it's still somewhat early. I, I feel kind of like a election night and you're looking at the results coming in and you have to remember that there are still precincts out. Winfield leads Point Pleasant 21 to 10. Winfield is the seventh rated team in AA. North Marion ranked number one 42-7 over Liberty at halftime. Here's one of the surprises so far. Scott, the only unbeaten team left in class AA and ranked number two ahead of Fairmont Senior is trailing Nitro 21-12. That game is at halftime. Now, Nitro's not a, they're not a bad team. They're 6-3 and three this season, but Scott was expecting to win this game and finish number two in the Class AA ratings. Roan County has now rallied and taken the lead over Oak Glen. I didn't think that was going to stand up. Roan leading 21-14 against an Oak Glen team that is 1-8 on the season. 
Chapmanville leads man at the half, 17-0. Bridgeport over Lincoln, 35-14 at halftime. Herbert Hoover, the most likely East Fairmont opponent, is leading 57-20 over Logan at halftime. Lewis County, 42, Grafton nothing. Frankfurt over Kaiser, 14-7. Braxton leading Clay County, 14-6. RCB beating Elkins at the half, 30 to nothing. And the most likely polar bear opponent in the first round of the playoffs is Wayne. Wayne is leading Polka 33-0. Now that's assuming that Scott comes back and wins its game against Nitro. If Scott loses, that could change everything. Uh, but all four the better for the polar bears. In class, AAA Parkersburg leads Musselman at the half 28-3. George Washington over Woodrow 35-0. Philip Barber trailing Preston at the half, 13 to 12. That could have impact on the uh, AA pairings. And Morgantown trailing Lindsay. The cadets are leading 10-7 in the third quarter. Here at the stadium, the Polar Bears are ready to kick off to the Bees now. And it'll be Peschel kicking off from right to left. Murphy and Boone back to return for the Bees. Ball teed up in the center of the field, and here is Peschel's right-footed kick, end over end, short, and Murphy comes up, gets it at the 21, runs to the left, gets up to the 25. Now there's a flag down as he takes it to the sidelines at the 40, the 50, and then pushed out of bounds at the 45, but a flag is down all the way back at the 21-yard line. I saw that coming right away. Uh, yeah, number three, Brandon Pacino. It looked like he uh, he basically tackled Chris Wilson. Uh, the referee called it as soon as he saw that. It's, it's definitely going to be coming back. So Gavin Murphy, who had a really nice return, they said that the thing they like so much about Murphy is, well, not just not only his heart, which you have to have when you're his size and playing college or high school football, but they like his speed, and you saw it in that kickoff return. When he got to the sidelines, he was a blur going down the sidelines, but it's all for naught as the ball is going to be brought inside the 20 yard line. The flag's at the 21, which means the penalty will take the ball back. Well, they're gonna mark it down at the 20. So they mark the penalty from the 30 yard line. And the bees will go first and 10 from the 20, first play of the second half coming up. Polar Bears dig in defensively now as East Fairmont, who has struggled on offense, has the ball. And the handoff goes off the left side to Fantasia for maybe a yard. Stopped on the right side of the Polar Bear defense and making the play was Max Bracero. Yeah, great start by that, uh, that Fairmont senior uh, uh, defense. That's, uh, that's a really good good job of, uh, of starting off against the run. They give him two yards, make it second down and eight. The ball comes up to the 22. Two receivers to the right side, and Fantasia gets it again, and the ball pops loose, and it looks as though the Bees jumped on the ball. Fantasia fumbled, but Ian Crookshanks came diving in after the loose ball and recovered it. And it's going to bring up a third down for the Bees. No gain on that play. Third down and eight. Yeah, great job. And, and putting them in a third and, and eight, third and long situation, uh, that's not where East wants to be. And, uh, uh, you know, so let's see if we can bring some pressure this time. East has Avery Brown wide out to the right side. He is Crookshanks' Shank, favorite receiver. And Crookshanks back, play action pass, sets up, fires it downfield, and the pass is intercepted. The Polar Bears have it at the 50-yard line. It's Damani Johnson who was defending Avery Brown, and he has the Polar Bears interception, and Fairmont has the ball in its own territory at the 46-yard line. I'll tell you what, Jeff, if, you, uh, if you're a fan of uh, defensive back play, cornerback play, I mean, uh, Johnson just played that perfectly. His textbook, he, uh, you know, bump and run. He, he played a real tight press coverage and uh, just just made it so difficult for them to get off line, of, get the receiver to get off line of scrimmage, and uh, just, just great play. 10.38 to go in the third quarter, and just like that, the Polar Bears have the football in their own territory at the 46, leading 21 to nothing. And Brody Whitehair has Johnson behind him. 
He fakes it to Johnson, swings it out on the near side. It's caught by Hours at the 50, down to the 45, still running at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. He's into the end zone. Hits up, polar bear touchdown. It's a 54-yard touchdown pass from Whitehair to Hours, and the Polar Bears lead it 27 to nothing. And then if you're a fan of the screen game, that's about as well executed of the screen game as, you can, as, you, as you'll find. Uh, that's just, uh, just very well executed. Uh, very good call on the, on the first down after the interception. So uh, two very well executed plays by the Polar Bears. Special to attempt the extra point. His kick sails from right to left, and it is good. And there's timeout on the field with 10.25 remaining in the third quarter. It's the Polar Bears 28, East Fairmont nothing on Fun 93-1. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Brody Whitehair throws his third touchdown pass of the night, and the Polar Bears now have a 28 to nothing lead, and Cam Pesha will kick off from the center of the field. Seems like we just did this. And back deep for the Bees, Boone and Murphy. Here is Pesha's kick, and it's a little wobbler. It hits at the 25, and picked up at the 20 by Murphy. Murphy runs laterally and then is hit at about the 22-yard line, and he goes down there. One of those in on the stop for the Polar Bears was Josiah Jones, a senior, 5'5", 185 pounds. So East Fairmont comes right back out offensively. The Polar Bears had that quick change and converted quickly. And now the Bees are right back offensively, and they've got to be second-guessing what they can accomplish because Crookshanks, who's been an excellent passer this season, he's thrown for over 1,400 yards tonight, has thrown for 19, and he's had two interceptions, and he's just two for nine through the air. Yeah, I just, I just think the, the defensive pressure and then the way we're playing out uh, on the perimeter with our, our cornerbacks is really causing some problems for him. The ball is at the East 22. First down and 10. Boone in motion. He gets a little swing pass off the left side and takes it up to the 25-yard line and hit and brought down there initially by Fairmont's Tavion Thornton. It'll be a gain of about four yards on the play. All marked at the 26. Second down and four, second down and six. And at the line of scrimmage, we have another flag. Penalty coming up against the Polar Bear defense, jumping off sides. <clears throat> if you have to have a critique of the defense, and really the negative tonight would be just that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's about <laughs> really about the only fault that you really can find. I mean, I think we played pretty good defense, but we just, we just at times need to, to just find a little bit more discipline when those circumstances happen. Now it's just second down and two for the Bees in their own territory at the 30-yard line. And Crookshanks back to pass, getting pressure from Bigelow, unloads it downfield, and the pass is incomplete, and the flag is thrown against the Polar Bears, Thornton. The pass was underthrown, and it was intended for Hoyt Michael. And then when Tavion Thornton tried to come back towards the ball, there was some contact. And uh, interference is called. So that'll be a 15-yard penalty and an East Fairmont first down. Yeah, I, I tell you, and Crookshanks took a, took a big shot uh, you know, when he got rid of that football that time. But uh, it was a little bit underthrown. And, and so come, come back to the football, they, they got us for the pass interference. So East gets its fifth first down of the night. 
and has the ball near midfield. Now it's up at the East 46 yard line, 9.38 on the clock. The Polar Bears 28, East Fairmont nothing. Last game of the regular season. Quarterback Crookshanks, back to pass, getting lots of pressure, screen pass coming, and it is caught at the 50 yard line by East Fairmont's Adrian Fleming, and he'll take the football down inside the 35 yard line to about the 30. Screen pass worked very well for the Bees as well. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good call when you have, uh, when you know you're going to get pressure, and, and that's what happened on that play, and so, uh, you know, they, they executed that play pretty well. 24 yard pass play for East Fairmont, and that, uh, that's one of been, that's been the biggest play of the night for East Fairmont. 47 passing yards for Crookshanks now, and it's first and 10 Bs at the Polar Bear 30. And there's a swing pass coming near side to Fantasia. Catches the ball at the 25-yard line, takes it down inside the 20, and then gang tackle. And the Polar Bears pull the ball loose, but the officials had already blown a whistle. Yeah, Jeff, it looks like on those last few plays, it looks like we, uh, we're we not playing as tight a coverage as we have been you know, previously and uh, giving a little more space. So it would be interesting to see in the, in the red zone here if we tighten up a little bit with our coverage. First down 10 for the Bees now at the Polar Bear 16. East Fairmont trailing 28-0, trying to keep its pulse alive. And here's Crookshanks to pass, and he's hit by Bigelow, then just throws it away downfield and see if they throw a flag. There's a flag thrown on the play. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. We, we, we tightened up the coverage that time and uh, just no place to go with the football. Let's see what the flag is. Flag was down at about the 12-yard line. Penalty's going to be against Fairmont Senior for holding. And it'll be first down for the Bees. Football mark down inside the 10 at the eight yard line. And East can get a first down. So it's gonna be first down and three, hand off to Fantasia off the left side. Runs hard, takes it inside the five, and goes down to about the two, three yard line. It's a first down for the Bees on that two yard gain for Fantasia. Football marked down at the four. And it'll be first down and goal to go for the Bees from there. Crookshanks on a keeper. Runs it up the middle, and he takes it into the center of the line, gets to about the three, and then the Polar Bears stiffen. He'll get about a yard, maybe two, and it's going to be second and goal. They'll set the ball down at about the two-yard line. Yeah, that's a tough thing, Jeff, with the uh, the shotgun sometimes when you're that close to the goal line. Uh, you're already kind of sometimes at a disadvantage being that far back. And, uh, uh, you know, you just couldn't close the gap fast enough that time. So now it's going to be second down in goal for East Fairmont, moving from left to right, trailing by four touchdowns. And Crookshanks again just carries the ball right up the middle and he takes the ball into the end zone for the East Fairmont touchdown. So Crookshanks takes it in and East Fairmont is on the scoreboard for the first time tonight, now trailing 28 to six. And the bees ready to attempt the extra point now. Carson Church will be kicking from left to right. Crookshanks is the holder. Ball down on the tee. The kick is up. And the kick is good. 
Timeout on the field, 7-13 left in the third quarter from East West Stadium. It's the Fairmont Senior Polar Bears 28, the East Fairmont B7 on Fun 93-1. National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. Midway through the third quarter, both teams have scored, and the Polar Bears now lead it 28 to 7. And East will kick off from left to right. A game we're watching between Scott and Nitro. Both teams have scored in the second half now. It's Nitro 28, Scott 18. Remember Scott, the number two team in Double A, unbeaten at 9 and 0. A couple of spots ahead of the Polar Bears in the Double A rankings. Church tees the ball up on the near hash marks. Canfield and Hours are back deep for the Polar Bears. And here is Church's kick. End over end and it, it is taken on the run by Canfield at the 23 yard line. He goes up to the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40 and over the 40 up to about the 41. So Logan Canfield on a nice return on a short kick. And the Polar Bears have great field position from which to start this drive with 7.06 to go in the third quarter. Penalty flag on the play again. And penalty coming up against the Polar Bears on the return. So the Polar Bears Called for the foul, holding against Fairmont Senior. So the ball comes back to the 27-yard line. Canfield gets credit for a return to the 37, and Fairmont Senior is now up to 89 yards in flags tonight. That's the negative takeaway so far from this game. First down, 10, Bears, and Whitehair back in the shotgun. And he fakes it to Hours. He's back to pass, getting pressure from behind. Unloads it downfield, and the pass is incomplete. At about midfield, the pass on the far side intended for Navon Jones. Whitehair's pass is incomplete. Yeah, that time he got flushed uh, you know, in the and uh, it got outside and still, uh, still got it downfield. I, uh, you know, that, that, that time uh, with, with the pressure, it, it, was, it was a little hard to get the ball off, but he did. So now it's going to be second down for the Polar Bears. Second down and 10. Now the Polar Bears send three receivers to the left side. Canfield, Hours, and Dinger. Navon Jones wide to the right. Whitehair, second and 10. Quick pass, caught by Hours. Catches it at the 25, he's up to the 30. Takes it up to about the 34 yard line. Hit and brought down there, short of the first down by about three yards. That's just, it, 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 it's, it's nice that they've developed some depth at, run, depth at running back to where they can use Dylan uh, and put him all over the field now. And that's, uh, that's really nice to be able to do. Now on a third down and short, Polar Bears on a Keeper right up the middle, and it's enough for the first down. Dylan Hours carries it well. Now they set it back, so it's going to, yes, they're going to signal first down. A little concerned. They put it back at the 37-yard line, but signal first down Polar Bears. So that's a three-yard gain. <clears throat> and it's going to be first down and 10, Fairmont Senior. Here comes Whitehair, out of the pistol. Hands the ball up the middle to Hours. Hours out over the 45 and up close to the 50-yard line. And it's going to be another Fairmont Senior first down. Carry for the Polar Bears, 12-yard gain. And it's Polar Bears first 
Yeah, very well executed play uh, inside zone. Everybody got a hat on a hat. That's a uh, very well executed play. Clock turns down to 5.53 remaining here in the third quarter, and the Polar Bears have a 28-7 lead. And the ball now at midfield as the Bears move from right to left. Pistol formation for Whitehair. He's back to pass, looks short. Pass caught by Dinger at the 43. Takes it towards the center of the field, and he's wrapped up and brought down. Rocket Nichols in on the tackle for the Bees. It'll be a gain of about six yards on the play, and it'll bring up a second down and four for the Polar Bears. Yeah, the Bees brought a lot of pressure that time, and a uh, great job with the uh, Polar Bear offensive line picking it up and, uh, and, and again, giving uh, Brody time to throw the football. Second down, a short four for the Polar Bears with the football marked at about the 44-yard line. Need to get it to the 40 for a first down. Second down play coming up, and here is Whitehair back to pass. Has time, now in trouble. Now he's hit in the backfield, pushed forward, and he'll end up getting the ball to the 41-yard line, about a yard short of the first down. Whitehair brought down on the yeah, that was just a tremendous effort by uh, Brody to, to push the pile forward and, uh, you know, not take a negative play. So now it's third down and a yard to go. Third down and one for the Polar Bear. At the East 41, clock down to four minutes and 30 seconds to go. Third quarter, Fairmont Senior 28, East Fairmont 7. And the Bears send wide out to the near side. That's Thornton. There's the quarterback sneak right up the middle and carried for the first down by Dylan Hours. So a quarterback sneak that goes for about seven yards and the Polar Bears have another first down. You know, I know if you'd ask uh, uh, Jason Kelsey from the uh, Philadelphia Eagles what the best playing football is, it'd be that one, uh, quarterback sneak. I think that's his favorite, uh, mine too. <laughs> and it's now first down and 10 Polar Bears at the East 34-yard line. Polar Bears taking time off the clock and keeping their hands on the football here with a three-touchdown lead. Whitehair on a handoff to Johnson off the right side. Johnson at the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. He's into the end zone. Hits up. Polar Bear touchdown. Damani Johnson takes it in 34 yards out, and the Polar Bears now lead it 34 to 7. I tell you, Jeff, we get that kind of production from him. That just it just makes it so nice because uh, again, being able, like I said, being able to put Dylan on a different place, that's just the way you run a football. Uh, just just really explosive run right there. Special ready to attempt the extra point for Fairmont Senior, kicking from right to left. Canfield to hold. Ball down. Line drive kick is up, and it is good. Timeout on the field. 3.36 to go. Third quarter. It's Fairmont Senior 35, East Fairmont 7 on Fun 93.1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, home-style food and great value go hand-in-hand hand with favorites like slow-simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. Fairmont answers the B's touchdown with one of their own. And East Fairmont will get the football back on the kickoff now. Ball teed up by Peschel in the center of the field at the 40. Murphy and Boone back to return for East. They stand up at about the 15. And here is Peschel's kick. It's end over end, but short. Caught on the run by Boone. Drops it, picks it up, and he goes down at about the 23-yard line. So East Fairmont with the football now. Trailing 35-7. to North Marion leading Liberty 
49 to 7. That's no surprise there. No other updates. Hoover, East Fairmont's likely first round opponent, leading Logan 64 to 20 in the third quarter. First down 10 coming up for the Bees. The football at the East 25. Crookshanks probably feels a little bitter, better after his offense rejuvenated on the last possession. There's a fake swing pass, and Crookshanks on a keeper takes it up to about the 29-yard line. Hit and brought down there by the Polar Bears, Dakota Nisley. Four-yard gain for Crookshanks. And the Bees now send three receivers to the right side on a second and six play. Crookshanks gets a low snap. He's going to run with the football to the right side. And he gets up to the 30 and gets up to about the 33 where he is tackled and brought down. Chris Wilson in on the tackle for the Polar Bears. It'll be short of the first down. Third down and about two to go. Yeah, just great, great job pursued by the Polar Bear defense. Uh, you know, when you when you try to run a perimeter play and and you get everybody to the football like that, it just it just makes it very hard uh, to to get the positive yardage you need. Third down, two yards to go now. Crookshanks has different running back with him now. That's Fleming. And he's having trouble positioning him on this third down and two. And there is the handoff to Fleming. And Fleming will get close to the 34-yard line and close to the first down marker. Going to be short by about a yard, a one-yard gain for Fleming. And a fourth and one coming up for East Fairmont. Fourth down and one, the B's going for it here in this situation, needing to get to the 35 for a first down. Polar Bears crowding the line of scrimmage now, and here's Crookshanks on a keeper. He's hit, he's short, he loses the ball, and the Polar Bears recover. Crookshanks fumbles the ball. He was going to be short of the first down anyway, but then he fumbled it, and Damani Johnson dived on it, and the Polar Bears have it with a minute 24 to go in the third quarter. Just, just great penetration by uh, the Polar Bear defense. Yeah, you know that, that's how you play short yardage. Uh, you know, situational, good situational awareness that time. Uh, great pad level by the defensive line. Just all the way around. Great job. So Fairmont with the ball at the East Fairmont 33-yard line with a minute 24 to go in the third quarter, and the Polar Bears would like to strike quickly here. They have two wideouts to the right side. Hours and Canfield. Jones wide left, and here is quarterback White here on a design keep. He takes it inside the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20, and is run out of bounds on the far side of the field at about the 18-yard line. Yeah, and that's when our, our offense is going to be at the best, when we, uh, you know, we have all cylinders running with the, with the quarterback run, and then we're able to run with the, with the running back, and then obviously our pass game. So, you know, those three things, it makes us very hard to defend. Ball set down on the far hash marks as Fairmont moves from right to left. This is closer to the East Fairmont sideline now. First down and 10, 116 left, third quarter. Polar Bears 35, East Fairmont 7. Pistol formation for quarterback Brody Whitehair now. Johnson behind him, and White here back to pass, getting pressure, steps up in the pocket. Now he's running with it with room to run. Gets inside the 15, the 10, and is brought down inside the five-yard line. Brody carrying the football. Took a hard fall inside the five, but it's enough for a polar bear first down. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, the thing I, I, I like with what Brady's done, he's been doing it all year, uh, just his growth as a quarterback. He's just, you know, he, he, he waits uh, in the pocket as long as he can, but when he takes off, he's, he's a very effective runner. Those last two runs have made Brody Whitehair the leading rusher for the Polar Bears tonight, 55 yards. 
So it's going to be first down, goal to go for the Polar Bears from the three-yard line. Whitehair has Johnson behind him and whistle and a flag at the line of scrimmage on the far side of the field, offsides called against the Bees. So that'll take the ball half the distance to the goal line. So we'll call it the two yard line and the Polar Bears will go now first down and goal from the two. Clock turns inside 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, it's supposed to turn. The official signaled for the clock to turn, but it hasn't started. Now it does, and Polar Bears come quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Dylan Hours at quarterback, quarterback sneak. He takes it down to the goal line, and he is still waiting for a signal from the official. So they both, from the ends, walk into the center of the field, and they call him down at the one-foot line. A one-yard gain for Dylan Hours, and that will end the third quarter. From East West Stadium in Fairmont, the 103rd meeting between East and West has just one quarter to go. The score, Fairmont Senior 35, East Fairmont 7 on Fun 93-1. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. Starting the fourth quarter with the Polar Bears as close to scoring as you can get. The ball at about the one foot line. And Dylan Hours comes up under center to run at quarterback. And he takes the ball into the pile. And the officials haven't signaled touchdown yet. Now they do. It's a Polar Bear touchdown. It seemed he had to go far enough to get it into the end zone. But the officials were hesitant, but then signaled. Polar Bear touchdown, and Fairmont leads it 41-7. to Special ready to attempt the extra point for the Polar Bears now, kicking it from left to right towards the little scoreboard here at East West Stadium. And the ball is down. The kick is up, and it is good. Timeout on the field, 11.50 to go. Fourth quarter from East West Stadium. It's Fairmont Senior 41, East Fairmont 7 on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier, and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that Golden Blue Pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. The Polar Bears with a 42 to seven lead over East Fairmont. And Fairmont Senior is going to be kicking off, but another post touchdown penalty called against Fairmont, a 15 yarder. And that'll take the ball back to the 25 and that's where the Polar Bears will kick. 
So that's 104 penalty yards against the Polar Bears tonight. And Cannon Dinger comes in to do the kicking for Fairmont Senior. Returning for the Bees, Boone and Murphy side by side at about the 25 yard line. Dinger kicks it from left to right. High end over end, but short. And it is going to bounce at the 35 yard line. Picked up there by Boone, runs laterally to the right and he's grabbed and he's brought down and a flag is thrown on the tackle. Jordan Wagner made the tackle for Fairmont Senior. Penalty flag thrown on the play though on the return. Personal foul. Called against the Polar Bears. On the tackle. I couldn't tell if he said face mask or horse collar tackle. I think it was horse collar. It looked like he was more diagonal. but. He's too far away from me, and my screen here is too small. <laughs> so 15-yard penalty against the Polar Bears, and that puts Fairmont at 119 penalty yards tonight. That's a, a stat that's going to catch the coaches' attention this week. So here we go. First down and 10 for the Bees at the 50. Just underway in the fourth quarter with the Polar Bears on top, 42-7. And Kirkshank's pass, quick pass to the near side, is caught by Kramer. And he's hit and can't hang on to the ball. Nicely hit him, and the freshman Rowan Kramer couldn't hang on to it. Incomplete at second and 10. This is the kid who will be East Fairmont's quarterback next season. They really like him. Just a freshman, Rowan Kramer. So Crookshanks had been on a little hot streak there. He had thrown three straight completions. He is now five for 13 tonight, 60 yards, and it's second down and 10 for the Bees at the 50. High snap, Crookshanks handles it, passes to the far side, caught by Brown, but he steps out of bounds at the 46. It'll be a four yard completion for Crookshanks to Brown. 64 passing yards for East Fairmont tonight. And they have just gone over 100 yards of total offense. Third down and six. Crookshanks is back to pass again with pressure. Far side pass is ruled complete at about the 43 yard line. On the far side of the field, it was thrown low to the ground and Avery Brown was able to scoop it up and catch it short of the first down by about three yards. Yeah, it's just uh, just really hard for East Fairmont to get anything going in the pass game tonight. So now it's fourth down and three for East Fairmont at the Polar Bear 43, and they actually need to get it to the 40. Crookshanks is in the shotgun formation, empty backfield. Now getting pressure, and he's going to be sacked, but then throws it away. Intercepted. The Polar Bears have it. There's Delani Johnson down the sidelines. He'll take it all the way into the end zone. It's a Polar Bear touchdown. Crookshanks under heavy pressure through the pass with defenders all over him, and Delani Johnson intercepted it and took it into the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, just... Just a tremendous play by Johnson. Uh, yeah, that's 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 you know him just with, with just blanketing the coverage. I mean, it's just that, that's just just a tremendous job. There was a flag thrown as Johnson was returning it, thrown along the East Fairmont sidelines back at the 35. But Johnson was well beyond that. I'm thinking we're seeing a penalty after the play, perhaps on someone on the East Fairmont sidelines. We used to say there was a, a thing in the NFL called Revis Island. I think they're starting to be a, a Johnson Island because he, uh, I think he's pretty much shutting down uh, 
opposing receivers. Well, Fairmont is going to be called for a personal foul, and it's going to take the touchdown away. On the run, on the interception. And it'll take the ball back to the 40-yard line. So the interception by Damani Johnson stands. He was returning it, and when the penalty occurred, they say Johnson was at the 25. So the Polar Bears have it now at the East 40 with 9.27 to go, leading the Bees 42 to seven. So another major penalty against the Polar Bears, and that's, that's the disappointing thing in this game tonight, that the Polar Bears have had that many personal foul penalties. Oh my God. <laughs> we don't need to so yeah. here we go. Oh, sorry, Jeff. That's, that's, and you're right. You're exactly right. I mean, that's something that we have to get cleaned up as we get into the playoffs. Uh, that's something, you know, in a rivalry game, uh, but there, there's no reason we, we have to make sure we get that cleaned up. So first down and 10 now for Fairmont Senior with Whitehair in the pistol formation. In motion comes Dinger. There's the shovel pass to Cannon. Runs wide to the right side, tripped up at the line of scrimmage and breaks free at the 40 and gets down to about the 37-yard line and is brought down there. So he did a whole lot of running for about three yards. Yeah, but great job by Dinger of, of getting the, the positive three yards. Uh, didn't look too promising in the beginning, but uh, just a, a great effort to, to get some uh, a positive gain. 189 passing yards for Whitehair now. It'll be second and seven. The ball at the 37, and the bees have jumped off sides. Are you all that dumb? The polar bears have accumulated 15-yard penalties. The bees have accumulated five yarders. East has six penalties for 30 yards. The polar bears have 13 penalties for 134 yards. Second down and two for the Polar Bears. And here is Whitehair. Back to pass, getting some pressure. Now he's in big trouble. Tries to break free, runs to the far side of the field. He gets it to the 40-yard line and then fires it downfield and it's intercepted at the 35-yard line and the Bees have the ball. Rocket Nichols with a pass interception. And the Polar Bears have turned it over with 7.57 to go in the third quarter, fourth quarter, rather. Yeah, they just get, uh, get a lot of pressure, flush uh, Birdie from the pocket, and uh, you just try to get rid of it and, uh, and then through right to the, uh, the East Fairmont defender. So Fairmont Senior calls a timeout as Fairmont's come unravel just a little bit on both sides of the football. Timeout with 7.57 to go in the fourth quarter. The score. The Polar Bears 42, East Fairmont 7 on Fun 93-1. <clears throat> Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar Stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99. What has the football? The clock shows 7.57 to go, and the Polar Bears lead 42 to 7. The outcome has long been decided, but we just have to get to the end now. East Fairmont go, 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 go. running with the football now. The ball taken out over the 40, up to about the 45 yard line. Nice gain on first down. It'll be a pickup of about eight yards on the play. It's just a little toss to the right to Gavin Murphy after a low snap from center, and Murphy gets nine yards on the play. Yeah, it looks like uh, Coach Barger's starting to bring some, uh, some subs into the game now. Hand off to Fantasia up the middle, and he'll take it over the 50 down to the 47-yard line. It'll be an East Fairmont first down 
a seven yard gain for Fantasia. First down, 10 Bs. Clock turns down to 6.50 to go. Crookshanks has Fantasia behind him as he lines up in the pistol formation. Fairmont has Papali along the front line along with Apanowitz. And here is Crookshanks back to pass. Lofting one down the sidelines and the pass is caught along the sidelines and taken into the end zone for the East Fairmont touchdown. Avery Brown catches the pass, a 54-yard TD pass, and the Bees trail 42 to 13. So the Bees score against the Polar Berry Reserves and now trail 42 to 13. And Carson Church will attempt the extra point from right to left. Ball down, kick up, and the kick is good. Timeout on the field, 6.28 to go in the fourth quarter. It's Fairmont Senior 42, East Fairmont 14 on Fun 93-1. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Just a little under six and a half minutes left in this one from East West Stadium. The Polar Bears with a 42 to 14 lead and the Bees are ready to kick off. Kicking off from right to left. Church tees it up on the far hash marks. Approaches the ball and kicks it downfield. Nice kick, end over end, and it is going to roll into the end zone for the touchback. Fairmont gets the football back now at its own 20-yard line. 42-14 is the score. So the Polar Bears with the football. First down and 10 at the 20 yard line. Whitehair has two running backs on either side of him now. And he hands this one to Chris Wilson. Wilson cuts inside, gets up to the 25, maybe the 26. Hit and brought down there. It'll be a nice gain for Wilson, though, on first down. He's going to get about six yards brought down by the Bees, Adrian Fleming. Yeah, good decisive run by uh, Wilson. I like how he uh, he just put his uh, you know foot in the ground and just, just made one cut and went, and he got north and south. That's, uh, that's, that's a good run on first down. Ian Crookshanks, touchdown pass, makes Ian Crookshanks the most touchdown. Second down, four coming up now for the Polar Bears from the 26-yard line. And Whitehair gives it over to Damani Johnson wide to the left. He gets up to the 30, the 35, the 40, to the center of the field at the 50, and he's brought down there. A big gain, about 24 yards for Damani Johnson and a Polar Bear first down. I'll tell you, Jeff, I really like how that young man plays. He, he plays the game the way it's supposed to be played. He plays real hard and, uh, you know, just shows on both sides of the ball. I really like how he plays. The ball is at the 50 now. First and 10 Polar Bears. Clock turns inside. Five minutes to go. We're in the fourth quarter. 
Fairmont senior looking for its 16th straight win over the Bees. Wilson gets the handoff, goes to the left, cuts back to the center of the field and is hit hard and brought down there. It'll be a two yard gain. Tristan Ramsey, 5'9", 213 pound sophomore, brings him down after a gain of two. Yeah, this is important uh, time of the game. I know the game's out of question right now, but uh, for this offensive line to be able to, to show they can run the football when everybody knows they're trying to, that, that's, that's going to be big as the playoffs come on. Fairmont at the line of scrimmage now, second down and eight, and there is the handoff coming to the right side again and carried nicely inside the 45 to about the 44 by Chris Wilson again. It'll be third down and about four for the Polar Bears. Yeah, because there will definitely come a time in the playoffs where they're, they're going to have to run the football even when people uh, know they have to run the football. So this is a, this is an important uh, time in the game right now. Third down and four. White here trying to draw the bees off sides. That doesn't work, so he looks to the sidelines. This third and four situation. Takes the snap and he gives it to Wilson. Wilson runs to the right side towards the sidelines and he is tackled before going out of bounds. Very short gain on the play, if any. No gain on the play. It'll be fourth down and four for the Polar Bears. The game clock down to 3.06. And the Polar Bears send three receivers to the left side, one to the right. And Whitehair is in the pistol formation with Wilson behind him. Fourth down four. Trying to get the bees to jump off sides again. Long count, doesn't work. Play clock at six. Whitehair takes the snap, looking to pass to Dinger. Dinger catches it at the 35 yard line and he's going to go down there and it will be enough for a Fairmont first down. Yeah, very, very well executed play. Uh, uh, good job getting the first down. That last pass play did move uh, Polar Bear quarterback Brody Whitehair ahead of Jared Ferguson on the all-time Polar Bear passing list. He's now in fifth place all-time. First and 10, Fairmont Senior. Polar Bears had an extra player in the game and Justice Smith checks out. As Polar Bears have their subs in the game offensively now. And it'll be first down and 15 as the ball is taken back to the 40-yard line. The Polar Bear quarterback is the freshman Tanner, Tanner Woodman, 5'10", 145-pounder. First and 15, a fake to Carrillo. And Woodman on a keeper inside the 35, the 30 down the sidelines and goes out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Nice run for Tanner Woodman of the Polar Bears. Yeah, good run by Woodman. That's uh, that's going to you know, show through in his game. He's has the ability to be a dual threat guy. So uh, uh, this is a good moment for him to get some reps. That's not his longest run. That was a seven yard gain. He has a 19 yard run earlier in the season. So second down for the Polar Bears. Second down and about three to go. The ball at the 27 yard line. And the handoff goes to Wagner to the left side. Wagner slips a tackle, takes it inside the 30, the 25, and he's still running. And he's going to go down at about the 24-yard line. It'll be a gain of about three yards close to a polar bear first down. Now the official signal, official signal it is a Fairmont first down. Yeah, great effort by Wagner on that play. Just 30 seconds to go, and now the polar bears do not need to run another play. So it's just a matter of time now. As Fairmont comes to the line of scrimmage, apparently to go ahead and run one more play. And 
Woodman hands the ball off. It's taken by Boda. Boda takes it inside the 25 to 20. Hence angles to the sidelines, and he takes it into the end zone. It's a polar bear touchdown. A 24-yard run by Taron Boda as time runs out here at the stadium, and the Polar Bears lead it 48 to 14. Taron Boda on a 24-yard run, and the Polar Bears end the game with a touchdown. And now we'll go ahead and attempt the extra point. And now the officials say, you don't have to try the extra point, so the Polar Bears don't. And the ball game is over. The Polar Bears make it 16 in a row over the East Fairmont Bees and win the 103rd East-West game, the final score. Fairmont Senior 48, East Fairmont 14. We'll have the wrap-up coming up next on Fun 93-1.